artist, uh, digital artist and animator Defiant Squid. He's going to be presenting um, his landscape study series, as well as going to some depth about his process. Um, we'll be starting the presentation. We'll probably start off with the presentation of of their work, and then afterwards we'll leave. If there's time, we'll leave some room for Q and A. So, uh, without further ado, uh, Defiant Squid, take it away. Hi everyone. Thanks, Jason. Um, I hope everyone can see the uh, live stream and hear me okay. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on the, the chat. Um, so if you have any questions as we go, feel free, or we can wait until we get to the end. Um, so might as well just get straight in. Um, so yeah, I'm Defiant Squid, uh, also known as Alex. Um, I'm talking about my landscape study series today, which there was uh, three of. Um, uh, I've got a little bit of a contents page here. So we've got the first three pieces. I'm going to talk a little bit about inspiration, uh, a little bit about pixel art and what that means to me, um, a little bit about a async as a platform in particular, uh, and then maybe uh, maybe a canvas example, a blueprints example. I just this afternoon figured out how to get my iPad streaming. So if you want to do a live painting demo, we can do that. We'll um, maybe do some questions at the end. Um, and if this PDF, I can probably make this available to people uh, at some point later. Uh, so the first one, Landscape Study 1 with Visitor. Uh, I've talked about this a little bit before. Um, there is a video of me talking to Sam about it, so I'm not going to talk too much about this one today. Um, but essentially, it's four landscape paintings, all inspired by uh, traditional landscape painters, um, mostly in the UK. And the visitor is essentially uh, a National Trust property visitor who tends to get in the way of every landscape or nice little shot that you have uh, and then it also has some framing options uh, so that's that one this is the first sort of foray into um, larger programmable pieces where uh, there's there's less layers but also more thought has gone into how they all interact uh, and then the main one i want to talk about today is landscape study two with creatures uh, so I'll go into this one a little in a little bit more detail and maybe take you through the um, the uh, Explorer tool with this as well, which I've got ready. Uh, this was a bit more uh, sci-fi fantasy focused rather than uh, sort of calm like, idyllic scenes. Uh, and this one I tried to leave as open to interpretation as possible. Uh, and then the third one is just purely video game nostalgia from the 90s mostly mega drive master system uh i wanted to really play with the kind of painted pixel art um something a bit more vivid than the others so uh inspiration uh the first ones you might be able to see some similarities between these and uh the first piece so these were these are pieces that either i had in my house growing up or uh, in friends' houses that I saw quite a lot, and uh, the viewer Winter, Windsor Castle specifically was a big uh, influence on the landscape study one. Uh, yeah, soft, dramatic lighting, they're very painterly, um, they offer a good sense of scale, um, which is quite hard to get in pixel art when everything, you're working on a grid which is different sizes, so that was an interesting challenge. Um, and sometimes, a lot of the time, they seem quite foggy as well, which is also interesting. Uh, a bit more inspiration, uh, something a bit more modern and abstract. So uh, Mondrian and Paul Clay are two big uh, influences on my work. Um, and Root Brick, who I found relatively recently, um, I found her piece, White Mountain, I think it was in, in the Ritz Museum. Um, and uh, it's very geometric, very lacks lacks color, um, but uh, still a big a big 
inspiration. Um, and you can see sort of, well, hopefully you can see the visible brush strokes uh, in the other pieces. So that's, that's a big influence. This is where it gets a little bit more varied um, and interesting, I think. Uh, so the uh, I've always been a big fan of massive Renaissance naval battles for some reason, which I think there's something incredibly unique and uh, dramatic about it all. Uh, and they're, they're always very smoky and fiery, and that's quite a hard thing to get, again, in pixel art. Uh, this ties into games that I play a lot or have played a lot, like Civilization, um, things like Sea of Thieves, where you've got uh, massive megalodons or sharks um, potentially coming to take your ship uh, at any point, which can be quite scary. Um, we've got uh, Skyrim and uh, Edinburgh Castle were a big, big inspiration for the the first night piece. Um, and uh, it's essentially just a castle on a hill, but I wanted to to give it its own um, its own personality and intrigue into the story. Uh, and then we've got a lot of sci-fi stuff as well. Um, I've played a bit of No Man's Sky and I've been reading a lot of very, very dated science fiction uh, recently, which is really fun. Um, so massive sort of planet scale uh, interactions, either with uh, with creatures or vehicles or anything like that. That's that's always going to be interesting to me, uh, not to mention, obviously, with the, the stuff like Star Wars. Um, here is some really old work of mine. Um, I was interested in pixel art for a long, long time. And uh, in uni, I figured out that I really wanted to do voxel art, but I didn't really know what voxel art was yet. I also don't think it was a big thing. Uh, Magic of voxel didn't exist at this time, for example. Um, I'm very glad it does now. So these were my attempts to kind of bring pixel art into either real world situations, whether it's some exploding arcade game or just a real life building that uh, I had to figure out uh, how to bring in. So it's pixel art, but it also has a fair amount of uh, shading and other digital effects to it to make it kind of fit into the scene. There's a lot of fog and lighting effects. Uh, and the, uh, the ones in the bottom corner, they are animated short films that I've made, and um, you can hopefully see. So, for example, the the two heads of the the horse and the tailor, they're kind of rotated a little bit. So I'm playing with not being stuck on a grid. Um, so pixel art assets that I can then freely animate, um, and then adding things like widescreen filters uh, and noise, film grain, stuff like that. All this kind of ties into to what I'm working on now. Uh, can everyone still hear me? I thought I'd check in. Everyone see this, see the stream and everything? Yep. Yeah, you're good. OK. Um, so is that the next one? Yes. Tools and techniques. So I pretty much exclusively now for my, at least for NFTs, use Procreate and Pixaki and a do a little bit of animation in After Effects. Um, so I've spent a long time trying to figure out how best essentially to emulate real paint to the best of my abilities with digital tools um, and all the different tricks that, that go into that. Essentially, there's a lot of trial and error but I have also found, you can see there, hopefully this Old Beach and Nico Rull, I think that's how you say it, uh, are two digital brushes that I found in Procreate specifically. A lot of this applies to, to Photoshop and things like that as well. But um, these two specifically blend in really interesting ways. Uh, I've tweaked them a small amount to, to best serve what I want to do, but for the most part, they are kind of stock brushes and I just, wrestle them into doing what I want them to do. Um, one is a bit more uh, watery, I guess it blends very well. And 
but that's the old beach one and Nico Roll is a very grainy uh, textured one. And uh, I use I use grids and guides a lot. Uh, I was speaking to Jason about how I don't think being a digital artist means you should either rely on or avoid features and tool sets that are designed to help you. Uh, if you were working on a real a real life canvas, there'd be no reason why you wouldn't or couldn't use rulers or even bits of string uh, or guides. Uh, so I definitely embrace as much as possible tools that will help me, uh, especially in areas that I'm not too too worried about. Certain areas I will make sure if it's something that I want to make a specific kind of mark with a paintbrush. I will do that, but I'm more than happy to just use the selection tool, just, just chuck a big rectangle in, move something, a, a pixel over, and then blend it together. Um, so that's why you see in, uh, especially more recently, uh, where I've loosened up a little bit, I think you will see like vague pixel art areas uh, where I've just thrown uh, marks down, and then you'll see very, very straight blocky lines where I've cut out bits with the just with the selection marquee tool. Uh, and one thing that Procreate also has, which is really good, is you can, uh, I might show you this later, uh, you can paint a line and then if you keep the, the pen attached to the screen, it will just automatically straighten that line for you. It never really works exactly how you want it to, but that's kind of a good thing in, in the sense that you can keep testing it uh, and try it out in all different ways. Uh, for any kind of pixels, pixel specific animation that I've done, uh, Pixaki is, is just incredible. It works so well. Uh, it's very easy to use. Again, this is an iPad app, uh, layer based, layer based animation. So you can put together things very quickly. You can retime things really easily. Uh, Procreate has basic animation tools, but they're a bit tricky to use. So I avoid them. And for the most part, the vast majority of my files are well-named uh, and organized because they kind of have to be. Um, I'm a freelance animator uh, professionally, so when it comes to projects where I have to share project files or I have to receive project files from another freelancer or someone else, um, it makes everybody's life a lot easier if you're naming all your files really well. So that's more of a vague advice uh, for digital art. It's much better, I think, in the long run, uh, if you're coming back to a project to have everything named, but it does take time. So digital painting specifically, uh, these are some close-up shots of some of my pieces. Um, the first one that I'd like to talk about, I guess, is the one in the bottom left, uh, which is the first kind of castle um, close-up that I've got where this is this is the point where I think I figured out that within a pixel grid, uh, I could still use brush strokes to indicate direction, which was a bit of a game changer for me, I think, in terms of where I wanted to go next. Um, you can see the kind of difference in the way the sky is between the bottom one and the top one on the left. Uh, I sort of painted every single square, whereas the next one. Uh, and further along, I mean, from at this point, I, I barely focus on sky uh, in sense of pixelating every single thing because I think a little something a little bit looser looks better uh, and allows a bit more detail on foreground objects. Uh, and in the the one in the top left, uh, which is the kind of sky where uh, White Run from Skyrim and Edinburgh Castle inspired one. Um, I like the idea of a, an, an ancient medieval castle that is lit either by lanterns or in the present day lit, lit by uh, flood lamps that on the ground which, which project upwards. And uh, this is something that I've really enjoyed working with. And I think I'll just keep doing because going back to the, the brush, my favorite brush, Old Beach, Whatever it, how I don't understand how it does it. I'm not going to pretend I know anything about brush dynamics. If there is anyone that that does know, please say. But um, it 
builds around the edges of the brush really well, which means you can uh, draw, draw or paint along the edges of squares really well and then blend into them. Uh, so that's kind of how I ended up in this in this position where I was initially messing around with direction, thinking how can I imply a tower and how can I imply flat grassland simply just by doing uh, vertical and horizontal strokes. Uh, and then it ended up with me playing with light, really, uh, which has been a lot of fun. And uh, on the far right, there, that's also sort of a lot of experimentation with different brushes and color uh, blending, uh, and also trying to figure out how to display fire and smoke in a reflected water surface in pixel art. It's very, it gets a bit, uh, I try not to think about it while I'm doing it, but um, it was a really interesting challenge. So there's a lot of texture uh, on these pieces sort of really, really close up if you look at them, uh, which I recommend you do. The one in the middle, the nebula, uh, is from a recent piece where I drew what kind of looked like a galaxy, uh, and I wasn't particularly happy with how I'd done it. So again, I took the selection tool, um, I just chopped it up, really, chopped it up, moved it around, which is where you get this strange blend of uh, textured, direction pieces, uh, as well as sort of light uh, banding, I guess, and then straight edges along where I've cut it up and twist, essentially twisted it. Uh, I've also included this picture here to show I'm moving towards being less restricted by the grid. Uh, I like the idea of mostly working to a grid, but also fitting in certain things like tiny stars along the intersection of four in the middle of four squares rather than one large square as a star because it can look too big. Uh, and that's something I, I was tempted to do before, but uh, I wasn't brave enough. So now I've, now I've finally got there, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, yes, descriptions and previews. So, in terms of async specifically, I like to put as much effort as I can into the uh, the text, uh, the titles of pieces. I really want to evoke some some kind of emotional mystery, especially in in landscape study two, where I had these four massive mystical ma like creatures. Um, I named them really. I don't know if that's uh, really pretentious names, but uh, I went kind of all out on making them otherworldly. Um, and I really like the idea that someone might see uh, a medieval castle with a dragon next to it and assume that the dragon is, a, is going to attack if they've played Skyrim. But also, um, this, and the same with a, a kraken and uh, any, any kind of boat or, or ocean scene. Um, but I also like the idea that say for example a Loch Ness monster is is or may be completely passive uh, and then that might also apply to to any of these so with with this piece I was trying to really make use of the programmable nature of it uh, and allow as many different combinations of unknowns as possible rather than saying this dragon attack this this city or something like that it's more it's left up to the viewer, I think, as hopefully as much as possible. Uh, I should say as well, one of my other pieces that had something like 50, nearly 60 layers. Uh, if you're thinking about doing a large uh, layered piece, I, I mean, I absolutely recommend it because it's a lot of fun if, you, if, you, if the gas is good. Um, but you can't, I don't think you can spend as quite as long on names and descriptions for each thing. So this is just an example of how on a, on a much larger piece, uh, I've got single line descriptions for most of them. I've included the, the image on the right um, because it's, the, it's one of the layer previews for uh, Landscape Study 3 for the vehicles. Uh, this was an initial kind of test of how I wanted the vehicles to look before I ended up with the classic kind of arcadey uh, fixed central perspective point. Uh, and then 
I ended up liking these so much that I thought, well, they still represent the same vehicles. Uh, why not include them in the preview? Um, and also they're, they're less detailed. I think previews don't need so much detail as the, the actual final piece. Um, this is a really good option if you, I think if you make a, a programmable piece, but you want to show something else, the layer previews are, are fantastic. And they will, they're the things that show up on OpenSea as well. So if you're thinking about where these are going to be, what, how, how your piece is going to be presented uh, around the sort of wider internet, um, it's worth making the effort to make these previews really good, I think. Uh, importance of limitations. Again, this is kind of a specific async thing. Uh, my initial idea for the visitor was to have a kind of Harry Potter-esque uh, character shows up in one artwork and then for whatever reason can't appear in the other. Um, I think the technology doesn't allow for this kind of thing, at least currently that I know of. Um, so it was good to know that that wasn't possible and then work around those uh, limitations. And uh, the image on the right, uh, my daily walk, uh, I was working at such a large size, uh, I think what are these, 36,000 by 64,000 pixels each, and there's 24 of them, that I couldn't include all of the layers in one Procreate file. Uh, so it ended up being, uh, completely separate uh, files for each one. Uh, not possible for now, no. <laughs> and I've included the, the track at the bottom just as an indication of my original idea for that piece was I, I'd, like, I'd like to have a, an arcade machine and all the vehicles in two separate pieces and have the controls of the arcade machine change from either a steering wheel or a joystick or a motorbike arcade machine, and that would have then affect the other the other piece, which vehicle there is. Um, it's basically the same the same thing. Uh, unfortunately, not possible. Not, but I, I like the idea of of being able to do that. I've written at the bottom here. Uh, work with an existing feature feature sets, but plan for future ones. So, uh, I still have ideas for those kind of things, but um, they they're, they're uh, sort of on the back burner for now. And when it comes to planning for the future, uh, I always like the idea of doing a generative project. I think layer-based programmable work fits into that really well. Um, and this is kind of where I uh, am going at the moment. So I'm working on a generative piece on the Async Blueprint Canvas tool. Uh, it's a generative village generator. I don't have a name for it yet. I haven't got that far in the project, uh, but I had a bit of a test early and I think I've, I've got 175,000 possible combinations so far, which is slightly worrying considering I'm not, I'm not even halfway through painting it, I don't think. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I'll, um, I'll finish the rest of the presentation, then I'll, I'll get the Explorer tool up to show you what I've got so far with that one. Uh, on the right, I've just got some other projects uh, that have essentially just been pushed to the side because of the Blueprints tool, which I really wanted to work with. Um, uh, I haven't really got much to say about these two, but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see in the future for those ones. Uh, I'll come back to the Canvas example in a second. Uh, what I wanted to do just while I've got, I think I've got time, um, specifically the, uh, traditional, the more traditional artwork that has in, inspired me, uh, for the most part, unfortunately, a lot of it is by men. I had to really, really search for examples of landscape painters. Uh, either from Victorian or other eras that I actually knew, which which worried me quite a bit, um, seeing as a call myself a feminist. Uh, so what I wanted to do was kind of include this as a further reading. If you're interested in art history, 
in any way, there are a huge number of female artists that you should know, that we all should know, um, and they just do not get the same amount of attention. I think a lot of people know Mondrian and, and Clay were the, the two I, I cited earlier. Um, John Constable and a few others were the landscape artists that that I referenced uh, <clears throat> and were inspired by. But um, I really had to search for for that, so you shouldn't have to do that. There are some links here. I might uh, include them uh, at some point in the chat later, so you can you can um, search for it yourself. But um, I absolutely recommend just just looking into it because it's not it's not really right. <laughs> um, that's about it, really, uh, for my presentation. I will quickly swap over to the Canvas tool so you can see. Uh, bear with me a second. All right, type this. Uh, that's the wrong. Well, oh, we can look through this one quickly. Uh, so this is the the actual um, landscape study two that I wanted to talk about. Um, I've got the the Explorer up here. Hopefully, you can see that. Is that still running? Yes. And uh, I didn't really talk about the frames, but essentially on this one, I created some textured frames for each each piece that kind of fit. So there's like a purple, a purpley one, um, and a blue one, and a white one. Uh, yeah, let me show you the the generative one. I really I really like this piece, but I'm like, I'm really excited about the generative one. So hopefully everybody can see this. Let's just check. Yes. So again, I don't have a title for this one, um, but you can see the layers that I've got in place already. Uh, there's obviously a sky, there's a background, uh, various tree lines and the grass, which I haven't done any variations on, but we'll see. Uh, we've got some little houses and some flags. So if I go to test, I know that's quite small, um, but let's just do a few, a few random ones. And hopefully that's picking up. Yeah, links don't work at the moment, unfortunately. So if anyone that may have played Populous uh, in the past, may recognize some of this kind of feeling um again a lot of my work is sort of inspired by video games and nostalgia um and the the goal with this one uh i like i really like the idea of of a kind of community driven uh or community owned piece that I did. I did. A, I did one before where everybody uh, was able to choose between red, blue, and uh, yellow. I don't know if anyone remembers that. This one, I'm kind of thinking the same thing, except all of these colors are going to be randomly assigned uh, and weighted in different rarities. Um, and I think to the point where, if you can manage to get a village with everybody with the same flag flying, that's probably going to be one of the rarest ones of, of all. Um, but just because of the chances of it not happening. Uh, so we've got five little houses and then a monument uh, in the background sort of uh, for people to gather around. Uh, there's a, not, not very much detail in this at the moment, I haven't done any shadows. Uh, it's very much still a work in progress, but at the very least, I'm going to say that the legendary animation, animated editions are all going to be playing with weather and lighting a lot more. So we've got that to, to look forward to. Um, I think that's about it for me. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Either I can stay on uh, on voice, or we can just we can just chat in the live stream chat channel. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. Thanks thanks to Jason and Async and everybody that's that's here listening um i really appreciate the opportunity to talk about this i appreciate also that 
I uh, tend to waffle quite a bit, so apologies for that. Um, but if you have any questions at all, please, please uh, just tag me, maybe tag me in the Discord. That's probably the easiest, easiest way. Um, but yeah, I'm Defiant Squid, and that's my workshop. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Alex. Really great. Amazing work. And so excited to see your, your blueprint. Uh, yes, I'm I'm around for the rest of the evening. I'm in the UK I'm for the rest of the evening. So if anyone wants to, to hang out or ask questions, um, I'm here. So that's, yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't know if anyone's still watching the live stream, but I'm going to share some progress. This is essentially a... Um, just the time lapse of uh, of some pieces, so that's that we can have that one in the background. Um, if there's anyone that would like a live painting demo, I can try and set that up and hopefully get it to work. But um, please just say. Should I do a live painting then? Do you think that's going to be interesting? Jason, what do you think? Sure, yeah, that would be great. Shall I try and get it to work? <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Close this down. Bear with me while I get this sorted. Okay. Can can we see the iPad? Yep. Good. Um well, I'm happy to leave my mic on, but if anyone has any any questions or anything, um, this is kind of this is very weird. I've never done this before, so so I guess I can talk through it. Essentially, what I'm doing now is putting a new putting a new layer down uh, and I'm going to draw a bunch of little stone houses so these are the, the log cabin style ones and uh, you can kind of see my very standard palette that I have with most things and um, the brushes that I'm using tend to blend together pretty well Uh, the, the trick with uh, something like async is getting all the the layers to line up. Um, so you can kind of see where, just show you this quickly. I've got started with the wooden houses, the flags off, and drew the little castles over the top. And then the log cabin ones, uh, they've all got fit together without overlapping each other. So I've had a few issues where I had to reduce the size of this tower, for example, so it wasn't in overlapping with the uh, fallen stones on the floor there. 
Um, Fluff Machine, you said that live painting would be dope, which I appreciate. Do you have any input on what you think I should be painting right now? Check them on the right layer. I think that's interesting. Uh, so I, I guess I should say this while, while you can actually see it. Um, again, let's find a blank spot. This is the my favorite brush, Old Beach. I think I've talked about it quite a lot. Um, it's not a square. It's a, a little bit of a wedge. Um, <laughs> Compy as hell, nice. So when it comes to painting within a specific grid, you end up kind of twisting around a little bit just to get a square pixel. Uh, and then obviously, if you want to really fine tune it, you can go in with the eraser. I don't know if that really sums up my entire sort of last 18 months of painting, but that's kind of the baseline process. And, uh, and then it's essentially just working out where you want oh, tiny critters. Yes. I didn't even think about animals for this one. I might have to do that. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, um, in terms of painting, constantly zooming out to, to check the, the widest uh, view, make sure it all fits together. And, uh, okay, I'll draw a tiny critter. You can see as well, I've got a smaller grid, kind of a smaller grid than what I'm actually working to, which tends to make small details a lot easier. So the flag, for example, I didn't want a, a chunky flagpole like this. Uh, so I'd much rather work on a smaller scale. Um, what critter can I do? It's tricky. Let's have a go. There's one, one thing that's really interesting with something like this is round roundness. You can kind of imply roundness a little bit just by basically abandoning the grid completely. Let's go. I think we're going bunny. A little tiny, tiny critter. What do we think? I think that's as uh, as tiny as I can get with the scale as it is. Let's put a. Uh, Oh, that's a really weird pink, isn't it? Bit of a pink nose on there. Um, yeah, is there any, any other questions or are we happy for me to keep waffling or shall I mute myself and just paint? What, what do we think? <laughs> Uh, oh, I will say as well, there's going to be at least one version of all of these houses that have been completely annihilated. There's going to be some fire in this piece. I really enjoy doing fire, uh, which is maybe slightly worrying, but. Uh... Cool. I, I think that I think that's good. Um... I think we have a hard stop by around nine, so we can we can end oh, it yeah. a little. Yeah, definitely. No, I, well, I I'd appreciate that. Uh, I was expecting the getting the live drawing to work to take a bit longer. <laughs> it actually worked quite well straight away. So um, that's something that I'd like to do a bit more, maybe um, either in sure. this Discord or on Twitter. That would be quite good. Um, but yeah, thank you again for everyone for being here. Um, and thank you, Jason, and everyone at Async for, for letting me talk. I've really uh, been a little bit stressed putting it together, but just crazy excited about Blueprints and, and how that's all going to work. Um, not to mention seeing the 
insane uh, power like that uh, Async and Xcopy and Coldy and a lot of money have uh, to to bring people in. Oh, it's amazing. Great community. Thank you so much. Um, and that's, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to turn off my mic, otherwise I keep talking. Thank you. Bye-bye.